Welcome to this program from the American Library Association's 1997 Annual Conference, held June 28th through the 30th in San Francisco. On this cassette, you will hear the presentation entitled, The New Generation of Scholars. Do they really need us? Maybe, maybe not. Now to our presentation. I did a fair amount of, of reading up on what libraries are like, what they've been, what's the history. I used a few books, I used a lot of internet, but I did it just in time for this conference. I'll probably forget it about Monday. <laughs> but I had a need that was something that I knew the techniques to get into and do something very quickly and timely. I still need the radar because I need to keep kind of up on, on what's going or else I wouldn't have been able to do the just in time. Separating routine updates from specialized information, that's sort of the radar vacuum cleaner again. That some things I need to keep up to date a lot on, and many things I need to know just kind of just in time, just some. It takes a little bit of experience to do that. And scholars and librarians are going to play different roles in how that fits. And web publishing, a lot of things on the web now that can be published is probably a pretty good test set of things that are going to come. There's a lot of libraries on the internet. On the internet. People used to say, maybe you should go to the Library of Congress, assuming that's a big collection has the answer to everything. You can do it, you know, anywhere you want. Or I can go to Melville from my office in Tucson. What can we learn from Star Trek? I think that we need to look out about 20 years or so. Shelley's comment was, what's about the next five years? That's all that a person can normally adjust to. If you get out too far, your mind can't get out that much farther than that. The problem is, when you only go out five years, the, the straight line extrapolation is still pretty strong. If you go out 20 years, something could be very different. So my suggestion would be try and go out 20 years in terms of conceptual understanding of what might be out there. And the answer is we don't have a clue. We don't have a clue. So therefore, if you are very flexible but receptive to very rapid change and new interactions with things, that puts you at ease when it happens in the next five years. And the problem is, if you don't do that, you're rearranging the chairs on the Titanic deck. If you're simply looking at things that are really important right now, copyright, access rights, costs, haves and have not, who gets all this stuff? That's important right now. But what you're gonna be doing is missing because you're still keeping the building and scaffolding intact, you're just kind of rearranging the wall. It's an open office design. So what are we gonna do? What are universities gonna be like? Most of you are university related here. If you look back 100 years or 200 years or as far back as you wanna go, universities are kind of the same. We have a slightly different curriculum. Different curriculum. We've moved from clerical to something else, uh, clerical. But there um, are not, a lot of changes. What's the library, what's the university going to be like in the next 20 years or so? My guess is it might be very different than what we see today. A lot of internal pressures and a lot more external pressures. That's what I mean by looking out 20 years. If we kind of get some kind of a setting for what might happen and be receptive to it, a lot of good can happen. If you don't do it, you look at the change as negative because it's not extrapolating five years based on your past. So I would say take about 20, 20 or so. That's only 25 years, you can handle that. Uh, that's a little less than a generation. And one way to look at it is consider the library, or even better, the information infrastructure that you deal with that goes way beyond the library, and take it apart. Treat it like a Lego set that has been supposed to be put together by somebody early on, take it apart and put it back together to do the same kinds of functions within this new context that you're thinking about in 2020 and see how that might play out. And again, just looking at the obvious misses the point. There's plenty of fires out there that we have to fight. There's plenty of things that look like they're the right answers. Moving into digital certainly seems like it's the right answer. Digitizing every book in the library is not the right answer. So that what's the right mix for doing those kinds of things? And 
multimedia and interaction and access will be part of that. Well, let me conclude by saying that if you haven't caught it yet, the world is changing. <laughs> it's not going to be just text. It's going to increasingly be image and all the things that come with images. <clears throat> Metadata versus data, the data about the data, what is there we can understand that's sort of behind the data. Uh, large storage, rapid access gives new options. <clears throat> if you can have these digital virtual disks now that hold gigabytes of data, hundreds of gigabytes of data, instead of megabytes of data, you thought when the zip drive came out that you could put 100 floppy disks on one disk with great stuff, and then jazz got a little better, got a little better. That's the one in the last year or two. So the rate of change is tremendous. If you look at what internet could do, internet didn't exist about three and a half years ago. So big, big changes coming. New players on somebody else's turf. That's the bottom line on the librarian versus the scholar. Librarians are becoming scholars. They're teaching classes. They've always been doing some of this and doing much more of it. They're working with faculty much more cooperatively. They're sort of becoming part scholar in the sense that the normal faculty, not library faculty, have been called. And increasingly, I'm one of these, you're going to have faculty that are becoming librarians. So they do a lot of this stuff on their own. That makes it more difficult for the librarian. If I only go to Doug, but I got a problem that's really hard for me to solve, which makes it really hard for him to solve. I take care of you. Well, the world has changed and we need to change with it. A lot of uncertainty and people get anxious when there's uncertainty, but there's a ton of opportunity. Uh, don't look at it negatively. Look at it in a way that each new issue here becomes an opportunity.